Greetings, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Bob Barber here, here with the next Rapture Resurrection Report. The report that pays attention to unique activities and events and things going on all around the world and up in the heavens and how they point to the soon Rapture Resurrection of the Church. So if information like this sounds interesting to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss any new content that we have coming out. In today's report, we're going to be talking about how God is aligning the sun right now to declare war on the earth during the seven-year tribulation from 2023 to 2030. This is huge, everybody. According to geologic evidence deposited on the earth by past solar storms, according to the experts, we are due for an impact by an X-50 KP-9 solar flare and take out the entire electrical grid on the Earth at any moment. Now, the data indicates the Earth gets pounded by a solar flare of the caliber of an X-50 KP-9 every 150 years to 200 years. The last time we were hit by this solar flare was 1859 with the Carrington event, and right now, we're in the red zone. According to their data, these solar flares have been hitting the Earth like clockwork every 150 to 200 years since the beginning of time. 150 years is the shortest time window they've seen, and 200 years is the longest time window they've seen. But according to their data, those two time windows occur very far and few in between. Do you want to know what the average time they've seen? They claim that this X-50 KP-9 Plus class solar flare hits the Earth every 164 to 168 years, on average. Now, this is the messed up part. How long ago was the Carrington event? It was in 1859. 164 years ago. And right now, their data indicates the solar cycle that the Sun is in right now from 2019 to 2030 is the most active and most dangerous since the Carrington event of 1859. Now, like I said, this type of solar storm has been hitting the Earth every 150 to 200 years, like clockwork, for millennia. But it wasn't a big deal because to human civilizations in the past, nobody paid attention to it because nobody was living off of an electrical grid that could be taken down by these annual solar flares and end up wiping out almost all life on the planet. Except in 1859 when they started implementing electricity into their telegraph towers and their operator stations where batteries caught on fire and the telegraph towers caught on fire. And then everything shut down. But today, the whole globe is operating on electrical grids. And about 90% of the world's population depend on these grids to survive. And that's not good. It's not exactly a secret that the sun can super flare, that solar storms happen regularly over time. And whereas in the past, when our society was not dependent on electricity, it didn't matter as much, our modern, electrified way of life can be taken from us in less than a day. No farming equipment, no refrigeration, no transportation, the food supply collapses. Water treatment and distribution collapses, no water from the tap. No heat, no air conditioning, no internet, no lights, no phone, no hospitals, no banks, no gas, no ATMs, no 911. So the question begs to be asked, when is this going to happen? In terms of the sun's maximum flare, an X-1000 event, a grid-destroying solar kill shot for sure, the most recent analysis suggests they happen every 6,000 years, but lesser, equally dangerous flares to our way of life happen much more often. Previous analyses suggested those X-1000 flares could happen as regularly as every 800 years, with the smaller ones still capable of eliminating our way of life every 150 to 200 years. We went over a study earlier this week that suggests sun-like stars may produce X-4000 or even X-9000 flares. But the question is not the maximum flare power of the sun. The question is how often does it fire a big enough blast to send us back to the Stone Age? The studies that attempt to answer that question do not look at the sun from a flare physics perspective, but rather the geologic evidence deposited by past events here on Earth. 
Time and time again, the answer seems to be the same. As we saw this past week in another paper, every 150 to 200 years, the sun will hit Earth to that degree. Not a long window for an electrified civilization to get its act together. The level of flare that our modern way of life could not handle is actually only around X50, which would produce a geomagnetic storm in excess of KP9, wiping out the global grids, setting fire to electrified structures, and sending humanity back centuries. The last one was 1859, 164 years ago. So in the scope of that 150 to 200 years range, we're in the red zone. If it happened tomorrow, no serious solar physicist or geophysicist would be shocked beyond belief, and our time is certainly running out. What's worse, Earth is becoming more vulnerable because we are in a geomagnetic excursion. The magnetic poles are shifting, but more importantly, the magnetic field protection of our planet, our protection from the sun, is weakening. We have seen it impacting the upper layers of the atmosphere and even the jet streams, but more important than the slight modulation of geophysical phenomena, the sun is getting an easier and easier shot at our planet during this magnetic pole shift. The important thing to take away from this is that what we see around us is not going to continue. These storms routinely pound our planet and we're due. For the first time, we are in an electro-dependent society, unlike the past, where nearly everything that keeps 8 billion people alive will be impacted if not taken away completely. Are you ready for this to happen? The sun doesn't care if you are or you aren't. It's coming. It seems like we're in a war of culture, economics, politics, good and evil these days. It seems fitting. The sun is set to declare war on our entire planet. He makes a great point right there at the end. All the war, division, and evil wickedness going rampant all around the world. It only makes sense that the sun should get a piece of the action as well. So now, even the sun is declaring war on the earth. And we know it's not the sun. It's simply God using the sun to execute his will during this time of judgment on the earth. For example, Revelation chapter 16 verses 8 and 9. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. Now, I know the Deagle reports are calling for a depopulation of the Earth by 90% by the years 2024 and 2025 and they have not changed their minds about this in fact they have doubled down look if one of these solar flares hits right now it takes down the global grid everywhere you will see a depopulation of the earth by 90 percent over the next two to three months and the georgia guidestones which they decided to take down revealed that they wanted to depopulate the earth down to 500 million people and I believe the reason why they took it down is because one, they're executing the plan now to make that happen. And two, they did not want anybody to point the finger at them and incriminate them for what they're doing right now to make their globalist dreams a reality, which is going to turn into a nightmare for them real shortly. According to Revelation chapter 6, 16, where they're calling for the mountains and the rocks to fall on them to hide them from the face of him that sits on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. Now, when do I think this solar flare is going to hit the earth? And when do I think this angel is going to pour his vial out on the sun to scorch the men on the earth and everything else? First, let me show you this right here. This is the current solar cycle that we are in right now. It began at the beginning of 2020 and it runs for 11 years and goes to 2030. And as you can see on this chart, starting off to the left, where it's yellow, 2020, 2021, the sun was operating at solar minimum, which means there are minimum black spots on the sun. And these black spots are potential solar flares 
that could bust loose from the sun and fly off into space. From 2022 to 2023, it's into orange, which means the sun is becoming more aggressive. More sunspots are forming. More magnetic fields are running out of control in the sun at this point. And then from 2024 to 2026, the sun will be at solar maximum. This means there will be the maximum amount of sunspots, which means the maximum amount of discharges coming from the sun at this point. So during this time, we can see the highest probability of the sun striking the earth with this deadly solar flare and much, much more. And they have noticed on average that the solar maximum tends to last a lot longer. Like I'm saying, this is just an average. They've noticed that over the last few previous cycles, the solar maximum has lasted upwards of five years. So that means the sun will be at solar maximum potentially in this solar cycle we're in right now from 2024 through 2029. And then it'll quickly drop off from 2029 to 2030. Now, here's my theory of when the sun will actually begin warring with the earth with the solar flares and scorching the men on the earth like the Bible talks about. Now, first, we'll set up the base with this solar cycle. The solar cycle enters into solar maximum, which is the most dangerous part of the cycle for the Earth around 2024, 2025, right here in the middle of the chart. And we know that solar maximum will last until 2029, 2030. Pay attention to this. First of all, you all know that we are in a new seven-year Shemitah cycle. It began on Nisan 1, March 23rd, 2023 of this year. And it runs till Nisan 1 in March 2030. And this is the 11th seven-year Shemitah cycle since Israel became a nation in 1948. 11, the number of chaos, the number of unrepentance, the number of judgment because of unrepentance. So I'm not surprised that World War III is about to begin in this cycle. And if this is the first year of the seven year tribulation, then we have this chart right here in the middle, which is the timing of the opening of the seven seals. Now, if this is the case, check out this alignment. The midpoint of the tribulation will be in the fall of 2026. And if you follow the line from this top, I'm showing you right here and go right down the middle, that will cross right in between the opening of the six seals and the opening of the seventh seal, which the seventh seal narrates the seven trumpet judgments, the seven bowls of wrath, the seven judgments that narrates the second three and a half years of the seven year tribulation. That makes up the seventh seal. Now, watch this. If you keep following the line, it goes right through the fall of 2026 and it's also smack dab right in the middle of solar maximum during the solar cycle how about that surprise 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 you can't make this stuff up folks the sun will be the most deadliest to the earth at this point fitting that the second half of the seven year tribulation where the sun is pouring out god's judgments on the earth like for example Revelation chapter 16 that I showed you is at solar maximum at this point. And it remains in this maximum deadliest phase for the next three and a half years. How interesting. Oh, don't worry. It gets even better. We are also aligned right here with the fall feast days of 2026. This is where we could possibly see the mid-tribulation mark of the seven-year tribulation. We don't know exactly how it's going to work out, but it wouldn't make sense to me that the three and a half years of God's wrath on the earth begins on the Day of Atonement, 2026, where God declares his judgment on the earth. And another thing is, the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, is also known as the Day of Remembrance, a Day of Memorial. Leviticus 23, 24, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets in holy convocation. And have you ever wondered 
what that space of a half hour of silence in heaven was all about in Revelation 8 1 and when he opened the seventh seal there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour that is what this orange line represents right here that the arrow is pointing at it's halftime during the tribulation like the halftime break of a basketball game so what's going on here are we looking at some sort of time of remembrance have you ever been in a situation where you're with a group of people and they wanted to honor the memory of somebody who has passed away and so they take a moment of silence perhaps this half hour of silence is for all of those who will perish during the time of god's wrath could be but i got a better one Perhaps it's because the two witnesses just died. Because we just crossed over the midpoint of the tribulation. And this is a moment of silence before they are resurrected. Please comment. What do you think this half hour of silence is for? Folks, the rapture resurrection is about to happen. Jesus told us in Luke 21, 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations. With perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Does that sound like what's going on right now? You bet. He said, distress of nations. And since we are on the verge of World War III, yeah. So everybody, all I can say is, keep looking up and make sure to keep working hard for his kingdom. Be that good servant. When the master returns, he finds you busy building his kingdom. And a great way to do that especially to finish strong in building God's kingdom in a short period of time is through feed my sheep today. And folks, we really need your help. A lot of people are coming to us with a lot of needs. A lot more people need to hear the gospel and the funding just isn't there anymore. You're sitting good, but what about them? This is just simply what we're facing in these final hours. So if you feel any slight pull in your heart, please don't ignore it. Just check out this quick clip and then see what our Heavenly Father leads you to do. Saints, it looks like 2030 may just be the year of Jesus' return to the earth, according to the information, the data that's coming out right now. And if Jesus is returning in 2030, then subtract seven years from the tribulation, that puts us right here at the beginning of a new seven year Shemitah cycle, by the way, in 2023. And there's no surprise that in 2030, there is going to be the War of Armageddon because Satan and his armies are getting ready for that time by causing everybody on earth to eventually take the mark of the beast. We are seeing all of our financial systems going in that direction, all of our rights taken away, all this to bring in the mark of the beast so they can change human beings to be more like the fallen angels in the Nephilim. Thus building his army and gathering them all together to fight Jesus and his armies of heaven coming in the clouds to meet them at the Valley of Jehoshaphat at the Battle of Armageddon. Now I tell you all this because the seven year tribulation is about to begin. That means the rapture resurrection is about to take place and we will be out here and our work Everything that we have done to build the body of Christ will be complete. Pencils down, test is over, and now it's time for you to stand alone before the judgment seat of Christ to see how well you scored. And your score is not based on how much wealth you build on the earth. That will all be deleted and forgotten. But instead, your score is based on how much work is done in God's kingdom to build the body of Christ. And if this concerns you right now, then let me introduce you to Feed My Sheep today. We have been conducting Christian missions globally for over a decade. And we have built a very extensive worldwide network of missionaries, teachers, and evangelists, pastors, and people assisting them that are moving about all over their countries from one location to the next. They are preaching the gospel of grace and leading new believers into the body of Christ. And they are providing them free Bibles, humanitarian relief aid as they continue to preach this gospel of grace throughout third world countries. As you can tell, everything is in place. You don't have to do a single thing except provide the seed. And thanks to your help, we have been leading 10 to 15,000 people on average every week to the salvation of 
of Jesus Christ for over a decade. That is a lot of gold, silver, and precious stones. And outside of the rewards and everything, we really need your help. You are so greatly needed right now. Your impact is so greatly needed right now. So please, just take a couple minutes right now, pause the video, and go to our website, feedmysheeptoday.org. The link is below. There you can give by PayPal, credit card, bank draft, or just send your gift in the mail. Do you want to make a big impact right now but can't afford to do so? I got a simple answer for you. Just become a monthly sustainer. We greatly need more monthly sustainers. And the great benefit about this position is you can set it and forget it. Now this whole thing is working on your behalf and you can focus on other things in the kingdom. Your seed will automatically be invested into God's kingdom on a monthly basis. How many new believers can you say that you were responsible for for leading to the Lord last year and giving a free Bible to? How would you like to be responsible for 36 new salvations this year and also give them a free Bible? Well, you can do that with simply $10 a month. So that's there for you. Please consider joining our Easy Feed Monthly Sustainer family. We would be so happy to welcome you in. So friends, all the links are in the description box below. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Feed My Sheep Today. It's also our backup channel, by the way. There you'll be able to keep track of your investment in this great work. Thank you all so much for your much needed support. May God bless you all.